Welcome back to Manhua Fury Manhua starts with a girl named Serena. Serena was a very poor child who lost her memory at the age of 10. Her mom was her only family since her dad had once left to get milk and forgot to return. However, when her mom died, leaving a mountain of debt for Serena to pay, she was sold to an underground organization called Fior, where she caught the eye of Madame Helena. She gave Serena the job of an actor so that she could earn money to pay her debt back, and she soon became her top earner. Her latest gig is ending as the story begins with her portraying Daisy Hillsdale, a young noblewoman, being sentenced to death for high treason. When the judge asks for the girl's final words, she says she did everything because she loved the first prince of the Weldon Empire. The guards take her away and the girl wishes the prince a happy life but she really doesn't care what happens to him. After the guards throw her into the well, she cleans herself up and asks a man how her performance went. He compliments her acting, calling it Oscar deserving, but Serena addresses him as father and requests that he pay up for their contract immediately. She immediately corrects herself, saying that he is now Count Hillsdale to her and that she should not address him as a father because no one named Daisy Hillsdale ever existed. It all started five years ago when the Count approached Fior to hire a young, talentless, talented actress and Mick begged the role of the Count's daughter. Helena warned her that the job appeared suspicious, but the pay was so good that Serena could pay off her mother's debt and retire comfortably. So she accepted it. To buy her freedom, Serena posed as Count Hillsdale's daughter for the next six years and highlighted the first prince's strengths to make him the strongest contender for the throne. She took high society by storm when she debuted as Daisy and grew closer to the first prince, eventually becoming her lover. Then, at the appropriate time, an angelic girl was introduced as her love rival, and she successfully stole the prince from Daisy, who became jealous and attempted to poison her. Her plan was meticulously foiled, leaving her to be executed. Serena assumed that was the end of her contract with the Count, but when she returned to Fior to collect her payment, she discovered that Count Hillsdale had backstabbed her and issued a wanted poster for Daisy. Serena is stunned and throws the poster away before asking Helena what is going on. She responds that the Count fears her because she did a better job than he expected and now considers her a threat. Helena informs her that she was offered twice the amount stated on the wanted poster to hand her in personally, but she prefers to save her favorite girl. She tells Serena to forget about her debt or payment for the time being and escape aboard a ship where she has made arrangements for her to hide. Serena flees for her life, changing her appearance with a magical device, but Fior's agents are also after her for the reward of 10,000 gold coins. She curses everyone for turning against one of their own, and she also blames Hillsdale for betraying her. Serena is in tears as her pursuers corner her because the freedom she has worked so hard for is no longer within reach. Then, a storm rises and a loud splash is heard. Everyone believes that Serena has jumped into the sea and they are afraid to look for her in the midst of the terrible storm. Serena hangs from the side of a ship as they depart because she throws away all her belongings to trick her pursuers. She climbs the ship believing it was the one Helena had set her on and hopes no one discovers her true identity. Well, let's say she jinxed herself because a servant notices her climbing up and raises a commotion. So Serena hides in a room while everyone searches the boat for her when she suddenly runs into a tall, dark man behind her. He caresses her and presses her hair as he inquires if she is a thief or stowaway, and she turns towards him. Serena knew the man as the crown prince of the Arena Empire, Amir. He once came to the Weldon Empire as part of a delegation, and the Count told her to get closer to him in order to foster trade relations with them. Serena was confident in her abilities to charm people, and she assured Count Hillsdale that the prince would be pleased with them. At the delegation's welcome party, everyone could not stop talking about how wealthy and attractive the prince was. When Serena saw the prince in person, she thought he was similar to her in that he became the center of attention wherever he went, and she assumed she'd get along well with him. But when he saw her, he said she was like a dog begging for his attention. That has hurt. 
Serena tries to come up with an excuse after seeing him on the ship. Despite her disguise, he recognizes her as Daisy and asks what she is doing on his ship, prompting Serena to wonder if she climbed on the wrong boat. Amir pins her to the door and asks her to answer him just as the guards attempt to enter the room. Serena tries to hug Amir so that she can scratch him with poison hidden under her nails, but he stops her, leaving her with no choice but to become intimate with him to survive. She kisses the prince, who falls on top of her as the servants open the door. Serena wonders how it came to this, but more importantly, she wonders how the prince kisses so well. Get yourself a room, you two. The servants are flustered and shut the door, believing that their prince has finally taken a lover. Then, Amir instructs his aide Kane to stop searching the ship because there is no problem and he orders him to leave immediately. Inside his room, he confronts Serena about her desires and she decides to gain his sympathy by crying. She claims she was trying to get to another ship, but Amir refuses to believe her after she attempts to attack him and shows her the wanted poster. Serena realizes he has seen through her act, but he still thinks of her as Daisy and recalls their first encounter, in which he insulted her by comparing her to a dog. She was furious with him and told him that he was terrible at reading people if he thought she wanted his attention. Serena was about to escalate the fight, but the angelic fiancé of the first prince managed to calm things down. The girl helped the two princes reach a trade agreement, and Count Hillsdale asked Serena to continue acting hostile toward Amir so that the prince's fiancé could earn his trust. Serena followed the orders and insulted Amir, calling him a barbarian the next time they met, which she now regrets. Amir removes her magic earring, and Serena returns to her original appearance as Daisy. She wonders how the prince was able to see through her disguise, and he inquires as to her purpose in coming here. He still believes she is madly in love with the prince, who sent her here to harm him. Serena is flattered to learn that her acting has fooled even Amir, and she decides to tell him the truth to get on his good side. Amir finds it difficult to believe that everything she did was an act. He can't believe she would spend years pleasing a client, and then he offers her a job in exchange for whatever she wants. Amir tells Serena that she has previously played an obsessive lover, and he now wants her to play his bride, who stole his heart during their first meeting. I think it won't remain just an act for long. He asks her if she is finding it difficult to accept this task and moves closer to her, attempting to tease her with a kiss. Serena is flustered, and her heart is racing, but she decides to grant the prince's request. The ship departs for the Arena Empire, and the servants and knights outside are overjoyed that their prince has found a wife candidate. Then, Kane informs the knight captain, Aiden, that there is another woman on board, a spy sent by one of the prince's enemies. She attempted to seduce Amir, which was the worst way she could approach him, and he immediately threw her away. It didn't seem like that was the worst way when our MC approached him, though. The next day, Serena finds herself eating a lavish breakfast because everyone has already identified her as Amir's fiancé. But she can only wonder why they were leaving in such a hurry and disregarding diplomatic protocol. Then Amir enters the room, and Serena wants to discuss the specifics of his plan before signing a contract with him. He claims that she has been his goal since the beginning and that when he found her, he decided to leave Weldon. Serena asks if he wants an actor from Fior. He should have told her from the start and the prince is taken aback because she misunderstood him. Serena is certain that Amir was after the actress who played Daisy. She asks him if he recognized him from the start, and he says he did. Serena is hurt because she believes Helena sold her out to the prince despite her strong feelings for him. Serena asks Amir how much he paid Helena, and he replies that he paid as much as he could. She is certain now that she was duped by Helena and sold out to the prince, and she accuses him of deception. Amir believes they are misunderstanding things, but Serena approaches him and unexpectedly kisses him. I am not jealous, I swear. She confirms Amir's attraction to her by the way he pulls her closer and shivers at her touch. But she also enjoys kissing him. Serena then pulls away from him and decides to use his attraction as a weapon to protect herself. She dodges his question. She then instructs him to draft a contract for their agreement. 
Amir informs his right-hand man, Kane, who is opposed to the idea of having the princess consort sign a contract. He asks the prince if he will let the girl go when the contract expires, but Amir has no such intentions. He tells Kane that Serena is an actress and that Daisy is just a character she plays. Now, she sees his proposal as a professional offer, and Amir wants Kane to use his intelligence to find a solution. The truth is that Amir met Serena ten years ago and made a promise to her, but he is forbidden from telling her the truth, and she has forgotten everything. Inside her room, Serena wonders if she made the right decision while the prince leads a search party in the Weldon Kingdom to find Daisy. Count Hillsdale is furious that the girl ran away and a lot is going on in Fior as well. Serena believes she is being exiled too far from the Weldon Kingdom, but this may be best for her. But then she enters a bedroom and begins to blush as she remembers her kiss with Amir. She wonders why he is so eager to marry but fails to notice the tale of a tiger inside the room. Kane, on the other hand, tells Amir that once they reach international waters the ban will be lifted and he will be able to tell Serena about their past. But he doesn't like the idea because she doesn't remember him and he'll appear creepy to her. Instead, he decides to seduce Serena so that she does not leave him even after their contract expires, and he assigns Cain the task of devising a plan. Cain is taken aback because he knows nothing about love or relationships, and he becomes even more agitated when he notices the prince's anxiety. Amir asks if he should start wearing more clothes because Serena may prefer modest men, and Cain is taken aback and advises the prince not to act so absurdly. Amir decides not to. Cain decides to follow his advice, believing that even if Serena does not remember the promises they made to each other in the past, he has her back and will ensure that she receives everything she has ever desired. Serena is sleeping in her room when someone knocks on her door, waking her up from a bad dream. She discovers Aiden, the captain of the prince's bodyguards, whom Amir has assigned to stand guard outside her room while he takes a bath. Serena believes it is a good opportunity to gather information, and the knight is eager to assist. He informs her that women have a higher social standing in arena and frequently head their households. However, Aiden is unsure about her roles and responsibilities as the prince's wife. Then Amir emerges from his bath and is overjoyed when Serena says she was waiting for him, but she only wanted him to look over the contract she had drawn. According to the contract, they will act as a married couple in love, with Amir protecting Serena's life. Amir is also concerned about Serena's identity and providing her with any assistance she requires. She has asked for 10,000 gold coins in exchange for the service, but Amir is concerned about the last two terms. Serena does not want him to contact her after the contract expires, nor does she want the duration to be long. Before Serena asks how long they should keep the duration, Amir asks her what happens if she fails, to which she confidently responds that she will not fail and will do whatever he wants. Then she says that she doesn't want to extend their contract beyond two years because it will cause complications and raise suspicions that they don't have a child yet. Amir blushes upon hearing that, and Serena adds that it is unavoidable for them to sleep together after marriage, even if they have a contract, and she intends to obtain some magical contraceptives beforehand. Amir can't take it any longer and lifts Serena up, saying that now that everything has been finalized, they will do as a married couple would. He takes Serena to his bed, but she falls asleep before they can get intimate, and Amir notices she is having nightmares. He hugs her and tells her to sleep well. Well, even I think it's too early for them to start practicing to make babies. The next day, Aiden's twin sister Dana begs Cain to let her see the princess consort, but he declines. The other soldiers have grown accustomed to Dana's childish nature, but they recognize her as the ship's strongest, and she is the strongest soldier. In their room, Amir asks Serena if she enjoyed the bath he gave her, and she thanks him. She compares it to heaven after going through so much. But the prince blushes when he notices some bangles on her wrists. Serena then tells him that the servants were unnecessarily devoted and giddy while serving her and that even though she couldn't understand what they were saying in their language, they became very excited when she expressed gratitude. 
Then Amir says that they can continue where they left off yesterday, and he approaches Serena. She tries to get away by claiming that they require protection, but Amir informs her that the bracelets she is wearing are the magical contraceptives she requires. He can't wait any longer and approaches Serena, but she tells him to stop. She points fearfully at a tiger in the corner, and Amir identifies it as a spirit. He informs her that, unlike in Weldon, magic still exists in Arena, and those who can properly wield their magic can summon a guardian known as a spirit, with Amir being the only one who can summon a spirit across the border. He assures Serena that his tiger, Leo, will not harm her, and he resumes his intimate relationship with her. Serena feels great while kissing and embracing him, and she wants to move forward, but she is nervous because she has no experience with physical relationships. Helena had warned her and the other actors not to give their hearts or bodies to anyone while acting, as this would only lead to trouble. So she pushes Amir away, who is disappointed that she refuses to sleep with him. He claims that he thought she wanted him because she was using magical contraceptives. Serena blushes, but she stops the prince and adds one more condition to their contract. They will not be intimate unnecessarily. Amir is upset, but he agrees to her wishes and signs the contract. Serena then asks him to give her a name because she can't use Daisy anymore and needs to keep her real name hidden for her safety. Amir names her Nisar, which is the name of the goddess of the sea in Arena. Serena's heart skips a beat as she hears her new name and signs the contract under that name. Cain and Aiden are discussing the prisoner's abilities in another part of the ship, and they believe that once they arrive at Arena, her magical powers will be removed, which would be the worst punishment she could receive. The woman strains at hearing this, but as they arrive at Arena, she is shocked. But as everyone leaves her alone, she begins working to escape her cell. Cain meets Serena for the first time at night, and as she greets him warmly, he becomes enthralled and swears his allegiance to her. Amir tells him to stop talking and asks him to examine Serena, who is having difficulty sleeping. Serena finds his method of examining her strange, and Amir has never told her that his assistant is a doctor. Cain finds nothing wrong with her and suggests that she improve her diet to survive the long journey to Arena. Then, Amir leaves to check the ship's course, leaving Serena in Cain's care, and she wants to get along with him because he seems quite helpful. Serena inquires as to what the prince has told everyone about her, to which Cain responds that Amir only speaks positively about her. Serena is perplexed and tells the assistant that she finds it strange that no one is asking her questions. Cain responds that the majority of the people on this ship do not speak Weldon's language, so they are unaware of her wanting a poster or trial. She realizes Cain is more fluent in their language than the prince, and she asks him if he is okay with her despite knowing who she is, to which he replies that he will serve her with complete devotion. Serena then inquires about the contraceptive bracelets which he informs her were custom-made. Serena has noticed Amir wearing a few of them, and she believes he must do so because he shares his bed with many women. I won't lie the prince really gives level 100 playboy vibes. Kane tells her about their prince who excelled at everything and was the first in line to become the next king of Arena. His attractive appearance makes women fall for him easily, but he pays no attention to them. Serena doesn't believe it, and she suspects he's inviting women to his bed, but then avoiding them. Then she asks Cain what the people would say if their perfect prince showed up with a stranger as his bride, to which he responds that people would be surprised, but no one would think less of her. He can't tell her the truth because of the ban, but he does tell her that she is the first woman to win Amir's heart and that she will captivate everyone. Then Amir returns to the room and dismisses Cain. He asks Serena if she enjoyed speaking with his assistant and upon hearing her positive response, says he will call him again tomorrow. He asks her to keep a safe distance and she wonders if he is jealous. He certainly is jealous and embarrassed. Serena questions why he left in such a hurry and he is unable to inform her that the prisoner on their ship has escaped. Aiden was concerned about the prince's safety and suggested that they kill the prisoner if they saw her, but Amir insisted that she would be punished according to Irina's laws once they returned. Now, 
He smiles at Serena, telling her that nothing is wrong and that she worked hard for her role. She responds that she was hoping for a bonus for her extra work and reminds Amir that he promised to give her whatever she wanted. He asks her what she wants to do now that she is free, and Serena is at a loss for ideas. She imagines herself holding Amir's hand for a brief moment before snapping out of it, convinced that they can only be together in Delu land. She returns to him and tells him that she only wants money. Outside, Kane meets with Aidan and informs him that Serena possesses extraordinary wealth. Serena has extraordinary mana, and even her words of goodwill have magical properties. Kane believes Serena's presence is already as powerful as that of a high priest, and once she crosses the border, she may improve dramatically. He then dismisses Aidan, and the assistant wonders if Serena will be okay because she knows nothing yet. Then Amir approaches Kane and admits that he may have messed up things with Serena. She told him she only needed money, but the prince exaggerated her response. To him, she appeals that Serena has no money. He appears sad, as she stated that nothing other than money makes her happy. What the hell? Kane is taken aback when he hears this story, and he agrees that Amir has put himself in this bad situation. Meanwhile, Serena is thinking about what happened earlier. She had always wanted to be free, but she never considered what she would do afterward. She believes that Amir gave her a second chance to earn her freedom and treated her with kindness, which is why she thought of him then. But she believes that love is not in their contract, and she is confident that a playboy like him will never fall for her. Sigh. If only she knew the truth. The tiger suddenly roars and stretches before falling back asleep terrifying Serena. She screams for it to go away, which brings the tiger closer to her. But Amir enters the room, and she is relieved to see him. He discovers that Serena is uncomfortable with Leo, so he sends him away. Then, Amir kneels in front of Serena, stating that he needs her to do the first thing outlined in the contract. He says they need to seek permission, and all Serena has to do is stand by his side. She dresses up in traditional Iranian attire and realizes that these people are more superstitious than she expected. When Amir told her that they needed to perform a ritual for the ruler of the sea as they crossed the border, because it would become angry otherwise, she didn't realize it would require so much planning. Then Amir enters her room and asks if she's nervous. Serena claims there is nothing to be concerned about, and as Amir approaches her, she blushes because she believes he is going to kiss her in front of the servants. He only wants to fix her necklace, and Serena feels foolish for expecting more. She has started thirsting after the guy she just met a few days ago. I wish I had that much riz. After some time, Serena steps out of her room and onto the ship's deck, ready to introduce herself to everyone. She is greeted with a rhythmic thumping, and she discovers that the people on the ship are bowing before her and hitting the deck to welcome and honor her. She is awestruck by the sight and recalls Kane telling her that everyone would respect her. She feels intimidated, but she walks to the front of the ship, where a servant forces her to wear a magical robe. She wonders how many magical items the prince possesses, and then Leo appears and stands right beside her. The tiger looks at her curiously, and Serena is terrified of him. But she must maintain her image of being a hero. She tries to be the perfect princess consort and tries to appear tough. Her acting fools everyone and she believes Leo is very close to her, demonstrating how close she is to Amir. Serena is holding back her tears when she hears the rhythmic thumping again, and she realizes that the prince is about to make his entrance. She smiles as she spots him. Amir gently takes her hand and whispers that he was almost fooled by her acting and thought she was delighted to see him. Serena feels bad about it because her smile is not part of her acting. Then she notices piles of gold, jewels, and fresh, exotic fruit in front of them, and she wonders what's going on. She is intimidated by the scale of the ritual and asks Amir if he is certain she does not need to do anything, to which he assures her that all she needs to do is stand by his side. Hain soon hands Amir a branch, and the prince assures Serena that she does not need to be afraid of what will happen next, the servants next to them are also holding the branches, and Serena suddenly feels the entire ship rumble violently. She wonders what happens when the sailors blow conch cells and the rumbling stops. 
Amir holds Serena's waist and instructs her to stand tall. She doesn't understand anything, but she knows there is something beneath the ship staring at them. Then she hears a sharp screech followed by complete silence, and Amir kisses her forehead, assuring her that everything is fine. The servants begin singing and Serena looks at Amir, who appears unfazed and valiant. Despite the circumstances, he commands the door to open in his native language, then gently holds Serena's hand and touches it to the invisible barrier in front of them. Nothing could have prepared Serena for what she saw after the ship passed through the barrier. As the sea and wind glowed, a massive blue dragon stood before them. She suddenly begins to understand the song in Arena's language and wonders how this is possible, given that she is unfamiliar with the language. She noticed that everyone was singing praises to the giant dragon staring at them, so she asked Amir what was going on. He only smiles at Serena as he welcomes her to Arena, and then she collapses. Amir carries her back to their room in his arms. She is embarrassed and asks him to put her down, but he refuses and holds her even as he sits. Serena flails around, but Kane advises her to stay still because she has lost a lot of energy. However, being next to Amir could charge her up quickly because they have such good sinistry. That is a new term for her, but first, she questions Cain about the snake on his shoulder, to which he responds that it was his spirit that he could manifest within the border. Serena then asks him about sinistry, and he says that their manas are extremely compatible and that simply being close to each other has a positive effect on them. Cain is about to go into more detail, but Amir interrupts him and tells him to let Serena rest for now. She wants to know more. So Cain explains that the border they just crossed separated the land with magic from the land without magic. The dragon they saw is named Igir, and it rules the seas and borders. Cain claims that it rarely reveals its true form to anyone, and that he did so today it must be very curious about Serena. Amir then dismisses his assistant, but Serena invites him back the next day to tell her all about magic and Arena. As Cain departs, Amir leads Serena to her bed and instructs her to rest. He begins to walk away, claiming that she will sleep better if he is not present, and Serena believes that he wants to leave because he is unable to bring his mistress to bed. These words take them aback. Amir pushes her down on the bed, instructing her to look him in the eye and repeat them. He looks hurt as he tells her that there is only one woman in his life, and that he does not want her to make him unhappy. Amir apologizes for his aggression and begins to walk away, but Serena feels terrible when she sees the look on his face earlier. She kisses him without realizing what she is doing because she doesn't want him to be hurt. He asks her what this means, and Serena says it's her apology. Amir blushes as he repeats that he has no woman in his life and will never have anyone other than her. He admits that it was his fault for not properly explaining things to her and that even the priestesses who gave her the contraceptive bracelets did so because they thought they would be appropriate for her. Serena smiles as she says it's good to have the misunderstanding cleared up, and Amir approaches her, saying he wants something else instead of an apology. He picks Serena up, and she realizes he wants her permission. She desired the same thing as him, and as they kissed, she was unable to resist her desires any longer. After spending the night making love to each other, Serena nervously asked Amir if people thought it was strange for her to faint during the ceremony. She is embarrassed that she collapsed in front of everyone. But Amir says it's okay because she fainted in his arms. She transformed the dragon into its true form, demonstrating her uniqueness. Back in the Weldon Empire, Count Hillsdale confronts Helena, accusing her of betraying him and allowing the girl to escape. She reminds the man of his betrayal first, and they agree to forget about it and declare Serena dead. Instead, he offers Helena 10,000 gold coins in exchange for ensuring that the girl never returns to this country, and she accepts the offer. The woman really liked Serena and wanted to train her as her successor, but she is grateful to her for bringing such a big payment even at the very end. But then, one of her acquaintances approaches her from the shadow. The man tells her that he is here for what is his and asks Helena to tell her about Serena's location. She tells the man who called the instructor that the girl is not his and adds that she does not know her location. 
She knows that dealing with this man will not be easy, and she doesn't understand why he is obsessed with Serena. The instructor believes Helena when she claims Serena also gave her the slip, but he instructs her to notify him if she discovers any new information. As he leaves, the woman buries her magic ear in a pot, recalling the other piece of the set she gave Serena. It wasn't just a magical tool for changing her appearance. It could also be used to track the wearer. And Helena believes it's nothing personal if she betrays her best earner. I am starting to hate these guys. He believes she does not fully trust him and is unaware of their past. Ten years ago, she asked him to get her in the future, and that was what kept Amir going. Then Cain appears and informs Amir that the prisoner has killed herself, and he quietly departs with him. Serena, on the other hand, begins to have nightmares as he leaves and she mutters that she wants to escape. She recalls the instructor teaching her to seduce people and engage in indecent behavior with her in the name of lessons. Somebody call the FBI on him. Outside, Amir discovers that some servants were skipping work to have a drink, and when they heard the prisoner choke, they attempted to remove her gag so that she could breathe properly, but she used the opportunity to commit suicide by biting her tongue. Ain and Aiden are both willing to accept responsibility for the incident, but Amir advises them to focus on finding clues rather than dwelling on what happened. He believes the prisoner had an accomplice and that she was murdered. The two men are encouraged by his words and they say they will look for clues and that he should return to the princess consort. Amir informs them that he is unable to do so because he must remain vigilant in the search for mutants. He decides to look for clues with his spirit because it will be faster and instructs Cain to increase Serena's security. It's been a week since Serena crossed the border, and she's finally enjoying her life on the ship because everyone can now use magic, and she benefits from it. She is also learning about magic and arena from Cain. The world has four types of magic water, fire, wind, and earth, which can be combined to create a variety of spells. Serena is a quick learner who understands that a spirit reflects a person's magic. She questions Cain about why they can't use magic in Weldon, and he tells her a long story about ethereal beings like the dragon Aegir and the Witch of the North, who decided to prohibit magic on the central continent. Serena thinks Amir is so impressive that he can keep his spirit even where magic is not permitted, and she discovers that his Leo is no ordinary tiger either. Serena has discovered that Amir's magic attribute is wind, and she believes that he would be better suited to earth magic, as his immense passion is like a shining desert. Cain leads Serena to the terrace, which is hidden by a spell from the outside, and she asks him if it is okay for her to be here, despite the fact that she lacks mana. He informs her that she possesses extremely powerful water mana, which she has yet to realize due to her extensive time in Weldon. Serena wants to learn how to control her magic and create a spirit, and Cain advises her to seek Amir's assistance, as this requires physical contact with someone close to her. Serena has many questions, but then someone breaks through her door, revealing that a soldier is subduing another. As soon as she sees Serena, she apologizes for barging in so suddenly. Serena does not want to punish the soldier in the way Kane suggests, but then she looks at the translation device she is wearing, which enables her to understand Arena's language. She tells how it begins working after they cross the border. The soldier, Dana, had been cursing the soldiers trying to stop her before going into her room, and Serena could only laugh as she saw her crouch in fear now. Then she notices fire around her body and realizes it is Dana's spirit. The girl is embarrassed to show Serena her incomplete and shabby spirit, but she compliments her, saying it looks like wings of fire. Her words attract Dana, and being around her automatically stabilizes her powers. She begins crying as she presents herself to Serena and declares her wish to serve as her knight. Dana is pleased and ignores anything Cain says to stop her. Outside, Amir and Aiden have uncovered no evidence of the prisoner's suicide, and they feel her accomplice must be highly proficient. Amir orders them to suspend the investigation until they reach shore and are safe from mutants. On the other hand, the priestesses who previously served Serena in secret are happy that they can now see her in public. Serena praises them for making her look good, but she hasn't seen Amir in a while. 
The priestesses chastise Cain for forcing the prince to work so hard and away from his wife, and she questions why the priestesses volunteered to be her attendants. Serena was taken aback when they initially presented themselves to her because their position was equal to that of a bishop. They serve no gods but rather the sacred sanctums of their magical elements. The priestesses always went in groups of four, and the weather was always pleasant when they were aboard the ship. Serena was astonished to hear this and asked why there were only three of them and where the wind priestess was. The girls told her that Amir was the high priest of wind and had designated them as his wife's attendants. Serena sees how busy he is and is concerned that she will not be able to see him soon. Outside, see Amir is speaking with Leo who does not want to be near Serena because her large water mana makes him afraid. He wants the prince to do the deed with her and help her control her powers, but Amir claims they've already become intimate. The tiger is like the older adults who want children from newly married couples just nine months after the marriage. Leo begins to chastise him like an older man when Amir notices a mutant behind him. He kills the monster with a single strike and tosses it into the sea. The soldiers are on high alert now and Leo instructs Amir to enlist Serena's help in combating the mutants, but he refuses to let her bear his burden. Meanwhile, Serena waits for Amir at the dinner table, wondering if he's behaving coldly because he's had his way with her. When she hears a knock on the door and assumes it's Amir, then she realizes how much she misses him. She answers the door and notices Aiden standing there. He blushes as he says he was supposed to keep her company, and she invites him in. She invites him to dinner instead of Amir, and even though he is nervous, he accepts her invitation to dine and then apologizes for his twin sister's rude behavior. She realizes that despite their differing characteristics, both siblings are quite good-natured. Aiden explains to Serena that he and Dana are from the lower ranks, which is why many people were outraged when the prince picked them as his guardians. And Aiden has promised to follow him wherever he goes. Serena informs him that the prince is an excellent judge of character and must have recognized their worth. Then Aiden informs her that he boarded the ship because slave smugglers kidnapped and sold his younger sister in Weldon a few years ago, and he attempted but failed to locate her. Serena feels terrible for him and asks if they've ever met before, because he looks familiar. Just then, Cain comes and reminds Serena that flirting with anybody other than the prince is unjust and she laughs as Aiden calls him. Aiden coughs up his drink, astonished. Aiden runs in embarrassment, and Serena orders Cain to clarify the situation with him. Then Leo enters and instructs them to avoid wasting time on trivial matters, instructing Serena to concentrate on activating her magic as quickly as possible by becoming more intimate with Amir. Cain characterizes Leo as a unique case, and the tiger advises Serena to mate with the prince to unlock her magic. The tiger really doesn't hold back. Serena is taken aback, but Leo exits after telling her what he wants. She asks Cain why everyone was so eager for her to have her powers, and she wonders whether Sinistry was involved. She asks if this is causing her to develop feelings for Amir, and while Cain hesitates, Dana rushes in and admits that it is. She claims that twins have high synastry, which allows them to bond and feel comfortable near one another. Serena says she has never been fully comfortable with Amir and that she has never been fully comfortable with anyone in her life, particularly Helena, with whom she has spent the most time. And she wonders if her relationship with Amir is like that. Serena discusses her synastry with Amir Kane and Dana, and Kane informs her that just her synastry bond with him is not enough. They must also be emotionally attached. Serena becomes serious after hearing this, but realizing she cannot allow her emotions to interfere with the deal. Dana then announces once more that she will serve Serena as her knight. Serena then announces that she will serve Serena as her knight, and Amir enters the room, noting that his wife is very adept at charming others. He dismisses the two people, and Serena is astonished to learn that he has sent them here to look after her. She feels anxious since she is alone with him. And she becomes sad because she hasn't seen him in a few days. Amir is unaware that she has missed him and believes the priestess and twins are taking good care of her. 
Serena is surprised to find that he will be going again soon, and she tells Amir that the priestesses are concerned that if they do not meet on a regular basis, they may drift apart. Amir turns to her and inquires whether she is likewise concerned about it. Serena says that she is concerned because it is part of their contract, which upsets Amir. Serena then changes the subject to Dana, and Amir says he can't let her be her bodyguard because she already has too many obligations. Serena is astounded that a woman may be a respected knight in Arena but not in Weldon. Serena admires Dana and believes that her spirit is a phoenix. Serena then tells Amir that she is not a phoenix, even if it is not fully developed. Amir finds her points of view intriguing and he tells her that most people think Dana is incompetent when they first meet her. Then Amir returns to the deck and Serena appears unhappy that he left. He tenderly kisses her stating that he does not want to leave her, but Serena wants to seek him for assistance with her magic. The next morning, Serena goes out on the balcony, where Amir informs her that she can now stay with him while he performs his duties. He hugs her fiercely, and Serena wonders why he is still on deck while the ship is protected by magic. Amir wants to tell her about the mutants, that, but Leo tells him to stop. The servants discover the Khazard Canyon, which is the only way to get to Arena from this side, and Amir grabs Serena's hand as he approaches her to have a better look. She is drawn to the golden sunset visible between the canyon's steep walls and believes it is nearing them. A fireball is suddenly fired at them, but Amir shelters her with his robe. Things have settled down. Amir asks Serena if she is okay, and then a stranger jumps aboard their spacecraft and shakes it. The man approaches Amir joyfully, stating that despite being gone from home for two years, he has not lost his skills. Her Amir cautions the man to be cautious in his greetings because he is not alone. The man is shocked and intrigued to see Serena, but Amir does not let him get too close. She introduces the man as Prince Azim, Arena's renowned Red Wing. Azim advises her not to bother him, but Amir does not let him get too close. Amir does not let him get too bothersome with formalities instead, he approaches him by name or simply as commander. He's Amir's uncle, and he smacks his nephew, asking why he didn't tell him he had a female before. Serena recalls what she learned about Amir in class while he and Azim discuss his family back home. Azim was one of Arena's most significant individuals and guardian of the eastern provinces. He was married to Sakura, the Earth's high priestess. He raises his hands for an awkward handshake and when Serena touches him, her hands can't be touched. Amir's uncle, Amir, catches fire. Amir swiftly extinguishes the fire and directs Kane to inspect Serena while he aggressively stares at his uncle, and Leo tugs on his robe. Azim apologizes, claiming that he wanted to test the girl but didn't understand she hadn't yet activated her magic. Before things get awkward, Serena comes forward and asks the commander to continue the handshake. Amir tells her she doesn't have to push herself so hard to be polite. But Serena only wants to experience the weird sensation she had earlier. Amir tells her she doesn't have to push herself so hard to be polite because it provides her insight into magic. She begs Amir to let her do it. And he can't resist her. Serena shakes hands with Azim again. And she feels hot and cold as she approaches a volcano. Serena witnesses a powerful red griffin. Azim's spirit, hovering overhead as Amir drags her away from an approaching object. Serena was surprised when Amir started laughing, saying she was amazing, and Azim returned his bird because Serena had just overwhelmed him. Everyone begins whispering that Serena countered Prince Azim's power, but she doesn't understand what happened because she believes Amir assisted her. He quickly pulls her in and kisses her lips and the rest of her face. He hugs her firmly, claiming he can't stop himself, and Serena flushes as she senses his eagerness. Then, Azim chuckles, revealing that Serena possessed immense power before awakening, prompting his spirit to help him, thinking that he was in danger. Then he leaves the ship aboard his griffin while Amir's ship approaches land. Everyone is thrilled to be back home, and Serena realizes that Arena is a much more simple and natural place than she had thought. However, she can't stop thinking about how abruptly Amir kissed her earlier, and she worries that she is developing strong feelings for him. 
Serena blushes as Amir approaches, but Kane suggests they talk discreetly. He informs them that Serena may have entered the stage of magic formation, but she is surprised because it is the second step after awakening, which she has yet to feel. Kane thinks Azim attacked her magic with her own, which could have sparked it. Amir claims his uncle was harsh, and Kane adds that Serena defeated the prince in such a supernatural contest. He believes it was done on her behalf by her spirit, who had authority over her magic. Serena still can't believe it, and Kane claims that her spirit was concealed, but it was performing admirably. He says that Serena has taken all except the first step toward obtaining her spirit, and Amir adds that Serena says that she did not feel attacked and instead landed up at the base of an illusionary volcano. Kane screams that it was not an illusion. She saw what her spirit was experiencing at the time. The researcher in him is keen to examine this phenomenon, so he quits the room quickly to get his notepad. Amir tells Serena that she is much more amazing than he had expected, and he has fallen more in love with her. She assumes it's a joke, but he assures her that he's serious and means a lot. Amir tells Serena that she is much more amazing than he had expected, and he has fallen more in love with her. She assumes it's a joke. But he assures her that he's serious and means a lot. Amir tells Serena that she is much more amazing than he expected, and he assures that she is much more amazing than he had expected, and he assures that she is serious and means what he says. He does not try to get intimate with her and instead recommends that she look at the harbor. They arrive in the market city, and Amir informs them that this is not their destination but rather a quick stop for supplies. He offers to purchase Serena anything she wants in the market, and she is delighted to discover that people sell gold jewelry at roadside kiosks, but Amir tells her to remain calm and avoid calling attention to themselves. He wants to buy her an expensive gift but she walks to the market city, and Amir tells her to remain calm and avoid calling attention to herself. She walks to a boy who is selling homemade products and buys a hairpin. Amir blushes as he sees her smile while wearing it, and he admires her even more now. He wants to know about her troubled past but he believes that now is not the time and he must do everything he can to provide her with the best life possible. But then Amir appears nervous and informs Serena that their cover has been blown and they must flee as fast as they can. Dana is in the market and being the impolite girl she is, she loudly calls out to Amir and Amir calls out to Serena. Serena calls them out and everyone in the market wants to meet the prince, but Amir is content to hold Serena's hand as they flee from everyone. Later, while taking a bath, Serena blushes as she recalls her time at the market with Amir. Serena prefers a piece of jewelry with amethysts to what the priestesses suggest she wear today. Because it has no magic cast on it, the priestesses decide to engrave a magic rune on it, transforming the necklace into a magical item. Serena is surprised to hear that Amir has a magic cast on it, and she is surprised to hear that Amir has a magic cast on it. But the priestesses explain that they aren't very good at it because they didn't receive much training while away from home for two years. They are unsure whether they can successfully cast a rune on the princess consort's jewelry, but she tells them that they can use this opportunity to experiment with engraving runes, and she would like to try it herself. Later, as she sits in her room waiting for Amir, he appears and runs away with her again while Dana pursues him to find out why he fled earlier in the market. Serena asks why he wants to run, and he says he wants to hold her hand again. She tells him that they don't have to act close to each other when they're alone. And while her words hurt him, Amir tells her to have her way. Serena calls his name and admits that she likes him as he begins to walk away. Amir is overjoyed to hear this, and he places her on the table while kissing her. Serena asks him what he likes about her, and he removes his shirt before explaining that for everything he tells her, she must reveal something as well. Serena blushes, but she believes that if Amir gives her some time, she will be swayed by her desires again. She notices him drinking wine and is curious he feeds it to her with a kiss. Then Amir suggests that they start telling each other what they like about each other and as she mentions how much she likes his voice, he begins calling her name. 
Serena admits she enjoyed it when they got intimate the last time, so they do it again. Somebody tell them to tone it down a bit. Later that night, Serena has another childhood dream in which she plans suicide after her mother commits suicide, but Helena gives her a second chance at life. Serena now believes that whenever she and Amir have an intimate moment, she experiences flashbacks later. Then she gets up and starts, remembering how she made love with Amir at the dining table yesterday. When Leo comes to compliment her on last night, she freaks out and falls out of bed. The priestesses arrive just at the right time and the tiger flees. They appear worried and have shocking news for Serena. When Serena returns to her room, the priestesses apologize for ruining her jewelry when they attempted to engrave runes on it. They say this because they cast a very basic rune on an expensive gemstone, and Serena tells them not to worry because she was the one who instructed them to do so. Furthermore, she is pleased that they created a magical device together, and the girls are moved. Later, Serena wishes to ask Amir if there is another piece of jewelry they want to give her. She says no, and she gives it to Amir. They can practice on, but he declines before she can say anything. He believes she wanted to change their contract so that they couldn't get intimate so easily, and Serena laughs, thinking Amir is just as shaken as she was last night. She decides to tease him by saying that she is only here to talk about it, and while Amir is flustered, she tells him that they should remove the final clause of their contract. He is shocked, but Serena continues to act and suggests that they should probably leave it alone. Amir suddenly hugs her from behind and tells her there will be no going back once they make this change, and as she turns to face him, they become intimate again. Later, Amir tells Cain that once they arrive at the port, he wants him to look into Fior. He believes Serena joined the organization after they made the promise to meet again, and he suspects someone is responsible for her memory loss. Earlier, when they were removing the condition from the contract, he asked her if she didn't recognize him when they first met, and Serena wondered if he was referring to the time when he called her a dog. A. Amir apologizes, explaining that he had been looking for her for so long that when he discovered her with another man, he lost his temper. Serena dismisses everything, claiming that Veronica is a villain after all, and that she deserves it. But Amir claims he's talking about a time before she played Veronica when they met on a bridge while it was raining. She stated that he must have mistaken her for someone else. He was right that she wouldn't recognize him. Amir says that he must have mistaken her for someone else. He was right that she wouldn't recognize him. Kane promises to investigate the matter thoroughly. But then they hear a screech and a woman jumps on top of Amir, demanding that he explain everything to her and he tells her to leave him alone. As they both refuse to give in, Serena arrives and, seeing another woman on top of Amir becomes enraged and demands an explanation. The woman inquires about the new girl and is taken aback when Amir reveals that she is his future bride. Then she snaps at him, saying that this man is a villain and that he is a villain. Amir says that he is a villain. This must be why he didn't return home for two years, despite saying he was only going out for a few months. She is furious and points her weapon at Amir, declaring that she will not forgive him. When he doesn't respond, she attacks him, and Serena rushes in to help him. She holds the girl's hand but still gets a cut on her cheek, telling her that they should settle things through words. But because of the cut, everyone is concerned about her. They completely bandage her face and offer her everything they have to calm her nerves, but Serena believes they should calm down. But then the girl comes to her room to apologize, and she wants to be punished for causing harm to the woman who will one day become the Empress. She falls to her knees, offering Serena to confiscate her territory, and the outcome flusters Serena, so she asks Amir and others for some privacy. Serena recognizes the girl as Princess Vivi, the guardian of Serena's southern territories, and realizes how embarrassed she must be right now. Vivi is surprised to learn that Serena recognizes her name, but Serena has memorized that she is Amir's maternal cousin and a formidable warrior. She compliments Vivi and requests that she keep today's accident a secret from the royal family. Serena's kind and laid-back attitude astounds Vivi, who wonders how her cousin could fall for a woman so unlike him. 
She realizes she is much better than him in terms of personality and wonders why she would settle for a mirror, and he enters the room as she says. Vivi is unaware that her cousin is listening in as she questions Serena about being forced to marry him, but when Amir tells her to leave his ship, she begins to argue with him. Serena interrupts them and says that, even though she doesn't know Amir well yet, she knows he will do his best not to make her regret this decision. She says she loves him, and Amir blushes, but Serena is only acting, yet she wishes Amir was telling the truth when he says he loves her too. That's what I call double standards. Then Vivi leaves for her room, where Cain promises to arrange for a priestess to care for her. Vivi claims she does not deserve such treatment, but it would be preferable if he served her himself. She aggressively flirts with Cain, but he pretends to ignore her advances. Is he dumb or something? Because I can clearly see what is going on. Then Vivi tells him that mutant attacks were decreasing in Arena, and it appeared to be the calm before the storm. Kane realizes it's been three weeks since this happened and three weeks since they crossed the border, and he hopes it's just a coincidence. Back in their room, Amir wonders what he should tell Vivi about their relationship, and Serena suggests that they create a fake love story to persuade her. Amir would prefer to tell her the truth, but he decides to keep most of it private for now. He is afraid that Serena will learn the truth and leave him. He decides to wait until her memories return, but in the meantime, he wants to spend more time with her. Amir kisses Serena and then takes her to bed, telling her that he will let her do whatever she wants, except leave him and requesting that she tell him that she only loves him when they are alone. The next day, Serena worries about the bad dreams she has when she sleeps with Amir and wonders if she should tell him about them. Just then, Vivi sneaks up behind her and asks what she is thinking. Serena inquires as to how she entered her room, and the princess begs her to tell her. Amir says, I don't know. 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 I don't want to keep her hidden from the servants who want to assist her in getting dressed. Serena chuckles at the tomboy, but Vivi asks if she's upset because she's finally regretting her engagement to Amir. Serena asks if she is opposed to their marriage, but Vivi says she is against it because her cousin appears childish. The princess then informs Serena that Irina is cursed and that monsters known as mutants appear unexpectedly there one day. Ten years ago, the situation was dire and the entire kingdom kingdom was in danger, but Amir heroically saved everyone. This enabled him to become crown prince and gain power. Vivi assures Serena that her marriage to Amir will be successful because he is like Irina's son, whom no one can oppose. Just then, the priestesses arrive and take Serena away for their rune inscribing session, and Vivi believes she is truly angelic. Later, Amir disrupts Cain's bath time by bringing up an important matter with him. He informs him that the water priestess brought him the necklaces on which they attempted to engrave runes. She showed him a rare purification rune inscribed on an amethyst necklace, and the priestess explained that when Serena touched the necklace, something extraordinary happened. Amir immediately offered to become the patron of the three priestesses on the ship, asking them to serve Serena indefinitely. He told her to keep this secret from everyone, including Serena, and to hide the true meaning of the rune. Cain questions Amir's decision to keep this a secret, as does Serena, who had accidentally carved the rune of purification, like the one on the magic wand in the Holy Sanctum. He wants to tell her the truth, but Amir forbids it, reminding him of what happened to the previous wielder of such powerful magic. Purification magic was the rarest and most powerful magic capable of undoing destruction and curses and when Arena was about to be destroyed, Empress Ramidas used it to save the Empire. However, in order to save her people through purification, she had to give up her life. Cain claims that things have changed and that if Serena creates magical devices, she will be safe and the Empire will be saved. But Amir remains firm in his decision to hide her abilities from the world. Serena, on the other hand, is wearing the magical earrings Helena gave her, and she recalls what the instructor told her about never trusting anyone on the job, which she believes she should remember now. When she goes outside, she is nervous because they are about to arrive at their destination. And when Amir sees her, 
he is amazed. Her beauty smites him, but Serena refuses to let him take a closer look, fearing that he will ruin her makeup. Amir tries to act hurt, but Serena ignores him and instead asks about the river and the crowd that is gathered to greet them. He says they are waiting to welcome her, and Serena inquires as to where the ship will dock, but Amir and Vivi laugh. Amir issues the command, the sails are furled, and the canal gates open as the priestesses sing. As everyone gazes at their crown prince and his fiance, the ship moves slowly towards the city, powered by magic. That is some next-level technology. Amir then lifts Serena, instructing her to close her eyes and count to seven. She does as she is told, knowing that even though she loves Amir, whom she will marry soon, she cannot allow her emotions to get the best of her. Meanwhile, the prince carries her, walks through the sky, and arrives at the palace before Serena opens her eyes. Amir declares to everyone present that he has returned with a magnificent bride with whom he intends to spend the rest of his life. Serena is taken aback when she enters Arena's royal palace and sees the emperor and empress sitting on their thrones, with Amir's younger brother, Prince Surid, standing in front of them. Serena is dizzy from the sudden development, and as Amir begins to report to his father that he was successful in his diplomatic visit to the kingdom, his father interrupts him and inquires about the woman with him. Of course, that is the bigger issue at hand. Amir pulls Serena closer and kisses her head as he introduces her as Nisar, his future wife. Cyrus, the High Priest of Fire, is the first to react to the news, eagerly asking the Emperor to hold the wedding ceremony as soon as possible. However, the Prime Minister and Cain's father, Kashim, insist that they first set an auspicious date. Serena asks Amir what's going on as everyone is frantically discussing the Crown Prince's marriage. He draws her in and tells her that he is usually very conservative and no one can believe that their reserved prince is flirting with a woman so openly. Amir tells Serena that she should now believe that he has never been with any girl other than her. Then Amir's mother arrives to greet Serena and she senses that she is not on good terms with her son. She claims to be named after the goddess of the sea and she hopes her ending is similar to her own. Serena is perplexed recalling her lessons with Cain, who told her that the goddess Nisar was known by different names in different parts of Arena and that her story varied everywhere. In the north and south, Nisar's story was a tragic love story, whereas in the east she had a happy ending after falling in love with a human and overcoming the god's opposition to marrying him. Serena now thinks Amir's mother looks worried and lost, but she doesn't. Amir's mother is worried and lost, but she doesn't. Amir's mother is worried and lost, and she holds her hands, saying she can't ease her mind, but it would be wonderful if she could bless their marriage. The Empress claims to have received her blessing because she has been waiting the longest for this day. But in a tent near the sea, a woman tells her master what she has discovered about Amir and his bride to be. She is aware that Serena has not yet awakened her powers and has attempted to engrave runes in jewels but has failed to produce anything remarkable. Her master says that she has not yet awakened her powers but has failed to produce anything remarkable. Her master warns that this may cause a delay in their plan, but the woman insists that they attack during the wedding ceremony, and her master believes that it will be the perfect gift from him to the crown prince. The next day, Serena is on a boat ride with Vivi, and they discuss how easily she dealt with Dana earlier. She had to leave for patrol duty and was upset that she would be unable to attend the wedding, but Serena asked her to promise that as her knight, she would look after herself until she returned to her. Vivi is still unhappy that the Crown Prince's wedding celebrations will only last three days, but Serena is eager to leave the capital and travel to Amir's territory. Suarev where she will be able to stay with fewer eyes on her. But she still wanted to visit the capital because she believed it was where Amir grew up. Vivi explains that Amir's magical power was too much for him to control, so he spent the majority of his childhood in the water temple to gain control of it. The late empress was extremely helpful to him at the time, and he eventually learned to control his massive amount of mana, but he still wears numerous magical devices just in case. Then, they arrive at the Holy Sanctum of Water, a where Amir spends the majority of his time and will hold the wedding ceremony. 
Serena is astounded by the beauty of the location, and Vivi teaches her some history along the way. But when she sees a mural of the sea goddess Nisar and her lover, she feels strange and forgotten memories flood back to her. She recalls meeting Amir on a bridge one rainy day and being asked to wait for him. Serena is surprised to see that memory and wonders if it was an illusion. But then she notices Amir waiting for her at the temple, and she recalls how he asked if she didn't remember him when they first met. She had never taken him seriously back then, but now she is questioning Amir. She remembers everything, including her memories. She trembles as she asks Amir why he was there, then sobs as she collapses. Serena believes she waited for a long time after her mother died, but she had no idea what she was waiting for. And now she remembers that she was waiting for Amir to keep his promise. She knew she had only met the boy once and she had survived even in the harsh underworld because she hoped to see him again. Serena saw what appeared to be a ghost and she saw Amir's face. Serena saw what appeared to be a ghost and she saw Amir's face. She saw a ghost calling her master and promised to see them again as she left with Helena. Amir now tells her that they had to peek into her lost memories to awaken her, and while he isn't sure what happened to her, he believes she was conditioned for a long time. Serena tries to collect herself, convinced that Helena and the instructor are behind everything. She curses them for betraying her trust, and then she looks at Amir, wondering how he must have felt when he discovered her and she didn't recognize him. She is in tears, and he hugs her tightly telling her that she must be confused right now and that she should take her time to calm down. He says there's no rush and she can ask him whatever she wants. Serena is emotional and unable to respond. Outside the room, Amir meets Sakira, the Earth's high priestess who previously treated Serena. She claims that someone manipulated the girl's memories but she is unsure how this could be accomplished without magic on the other end of the world. Sakira claims that thanks to the prince's sinistry with her and the signal sent by her spirit, she was able to access her memories. The priestess heard the spirit's voice when she looked into Serena's head, and she believed that once she awakened her power, her memories and spirit would return in due course. Serena is bundled up inside her room, and she believes the voice that said they'd be reunited one day came from her spirit. She wonders what Fior and the instructor did to her when Amir comes by to check and she says that they've been together for a long time. She says that they've been together for a long time. But she knows he couldn't say anything on the other side due to the ban, and he worried she wouldn't believe her. She chastises him for apologizing and he laughs, saying that the main reason he kept it a secret was that she would flee if she discovered the truth. He draws her closer and tells her that she was his goal from the beginning. Serena blushes as she realizes Amir came to Weldon for two years to find her. She's overwhelmed. And Amir asks if she regrets accidentally getting on his ship that day. Serena claims to have never believed in fate, but she believes that meeting Helena of Fior and boarding the ship were two fateful encounters, and that the second was far superior to the first. She is emotional as she considers staying in Amir's warm company, and as he reaches to kiss her, it she turns away, questioning whether it is appropriate for her to remain by his side. He asks why she is saying that, and Serena sadly tells him that she has spent her entire life pretending to be someone she is not, and she cannot imagine being honest with him. She is sad because she will continue to deceive him, and he will regret everything. But Amir caresses her and says he doesn't mind what she does because he believes the years he spent away from her were better than the years he lived without meeting her. He hugs her and says he doesn't mind having regrets as long as she's with him. Who said that romance is dead? As they become intimate, Serena realizes that she can be selfish and that it is acceptable to let Amir shoulder the emotional baggage she has been carrying. As Serena sleeps, Leo comes in and compliments Amir on his ability to console her despite his lack of experience. He replies that he understands what it's like to be alone, helpless, and struggling. He remembers how afraid she was when she said he'd regret meeting her, but he kisses her anyway, thinking he wants to be with her forever. But then, Amir senses the presence of Serena's spirit in the room and tells her that he has no intention of harming its master and only wishes the best for her. 
The spirit vanishes upon hearing those words, and Leo claims that he has previously felt the presence of that spirit while Serena sleeps. But this was the first time it revealed its form, and he believes she will awaken her magic soon. She asks why she looks so tired, and Serena explains that her nerves have kept her awake for a long time. Serena explained that her nerves had kept her awake for a long time. Serena explained that her nerves had kept her awake for a long time. Even when Amir is not allowed to see her. Vivi believes that the rule prohibiting couples from meeting after the wedding date has been set, but she enjoys seeing her cousin suffer as a result of this. Serena dismisses this as nonsense because Amir visited her at night, and while they did not become intimate, they did share a bed. She blushes as she considers how passionate he will be tonight after all the time they have spent apart. On the other hand, Kane suspects that the two of them are in love, and that the prince has been doing something behind his back while he is supposed to be away from Serena. He informs him that an envoy from the north has arrived and requests a seat at the wedding. Though the wedding was only for immediate family members, Azim and Vivi, the guardians of the east and south, is were given the seats that Serena's parents had left empty. Cain claims that excluding them will exacerbate the already strained relationship with the North, and the High Priestess of the Water Temple may use her authority to offer them a seat. Just then, Metis, the High Priestess of Water, appears, shocking Cain. However, Amir addresses the woman as his aunt, and they are not on good terms. Here comes the family drama. Metis tells him not to forget those who gave their lives for him, and he claims that his grandmother knew what she was doing, infuriating his aunt even more. Metis later meets Ignar, the Princess of the North, T in her room. She has come to request a seat at the Crown Prince's wedding. Metis tells the Prince that he will not be able to meet her and the Princess that she can't help her, because the decision wasn't hers, which surprises her. She does, however, tell her that an unexpected vacancy may arise. Ignar leaves happily, having understood what the woman meant, and Metis claims that the girl is foolish. But she resembles her mother, the former Empress Remetis, who died as a result of Amir's powers. Serena, on the other hand, is becoming overwhelmed by the number of rituals and ceremonies leading up to the wedding. She is currently paying her respects to the goddess Sirim, who is regarded as Irina's progenitor, as well as her husband Karim, the sun god. As she prays, she notices tiny fragments of light. Serena had noticed it several times before, but she had always dismissed it as a coincidence. However, she learned from Amir that this was how it felt when someone's spirit first appeared. When Serena's mother died, her spirit advised her to move on and not believe Helena's offer to take her in. After her memories were altered, she dismissed them as useless noise, but now that she is attempting to reclaim them, she can clearly see her spirit. She asks the spirit if she hates her for everything she has done, and the spirit appears in front of her as she declares that she will never do so. Instead, she is relieved that her master can now see her, and Serena bursts into tears when she sees a mermaid in front of her. The mermaid consoles her master, and Serena embraces her tightly, releasing her sealed power. The energy she spreads and reaches Amir, who is performing his rituals. Leo feels the energy, and he believes Serena's spirit has equal power to hers. Amir smiles, saying that his bride wasted no time in regaining her abilities. Ignar, on the other hand, plans to attend the wedding ceremony with Prince Shurid, Amir's younger brother, and her fiancé. She's still wondering how to get a seat when Vivi approaches her and asks what gift she wants to give Serena. According to Ignar, the High Priestess of Water gave her a ring with the purification rune, and she wants to gift it to Serena. Vivi understands the girl's ulterior motives and wishes to tell her off because Serena does not require the purification rune. She discovered a necklace with the purification rune engraved on it and learned that the princess had done it from Cain, uh, who was unaware that Vivi had discovered something that was supposed to be kept hidden. But because he asked her to keep it a secret, she doesn't tell Ignar anything. Vivi suggests they go to Serena because she must have finished the prayer ceremony when the floors are suddenly flooded with water. Vivi and Ignar can't believe Serena did this as she walks towards them because such power could only belong to the legendary goddess.
Later, when Serena enters the wedding hall, Amir is shocked to see her and the tiny mermaid on her shoulder. Amir can't stop blushing when he sees Serena looking so beautiful and perfect, and she tells him that awakening her power wasn't as difficult as she expected. He tells her that he has already promised to satisfy her tonight, but he is now even more determined than before. Serena blushes when she hears that, but her spirit rejects his words and regards Amir as a danger. She controls her, and Amir suggests that they get married right away. Everyone sings and cheers as the wedding procession moves through the city and Serena finally realizes she is about to marry a crown prince. She gets nervous thinking about the responsibility, but Amir holds her hand and kisses it, telling her not to think about anything else for the day. Their spirits are conversing behind them, but no one knows that the people who intend to harm them have made significant progress. And as soon as the wedding is over, they will make their move on the crown prince and his wife in the holy sanctum of water. Serena and Amir go through their first wedding ritual, which is designed to unite the couple as one spiritual being. A priest draws a magical symbol on the bride and groom's bodies, forming an unbreakable bond between them. After that, the high priestess of water serves them wine made from grapes grown in the temple grounds. Amir tells the nervous Serena that she only needs to pretend to drink it which irritates his aunt, but she still completes their wedding ceremony flawlessly. But then Serena suddenly becomes ill and collapses, and Amir carries her away. Everyone is taken aback by what is happening, but it is not so sudden in reality. Leo informs Amir that the wedding ceremony is about to begin. Leo informs Amir that the wedding ceremony is about to begin, and he tells Amir that Serena's magic has been dwindling since she entered the altar, and he curses himself for not realizing she was in pain earlier. Serena is still concerned about the wedding ceremony, but as Amir tells her it isn't important right now, her body goes limp and she doesn't wake up even when he calls her name. What the hell is happening? Serena initially dismissed her symptoms as a sign of nervousness, but things got worse, and her spirit vanished during the wedding ceremony. Serena endured it, thinking about not ruining their wedding ceremony or causing Amir to worry, but eventually she was unable to continue acting and collapsed. Serena awakens later, with Amir caring for her, and discovers that she is unable to breathe. He calms her down by telling her that all traces of poison have left her body, and he hugs her to assure her that everything is fine now. She is still struggling, but Amir breathes into her mouth, making her feel better. Amir believes that her suffering was caused by something in her food, but it did not appear to be a potent poison. He believes it is a magical stimulant given to those with depleted mana, but it could be poisonous to someone in good health. Amir asks Serena to remember everything she ate today, and she recalls that his younger brother gave her a pomegranate as a gift. He asks if anyone tested it before she ate it, but Serena is unable to respond and falls into his arms, her body is still burning from the fever, so she feels relieved when she touches Amir's cool body. He hugs her, hoping that the perpetrator will be held accountable. In the Imperial Palace, Sakura, the Earth's High Priestess, approaches Metis, who believes she is there to question her about what happened to Crown Princess Consort. But Sakura is confident that Metis did nothing wrong despite the fact that they have no idea who the real culprit is. However, Metis realizes that the High Priestess of Water had mixed a fertility tonic into the wine she offered the newlywed couple, and she sighs, claiming that she was only concerned with the Empire's well-being, again with this stuff of older adults forcing young couples to have kids soon. She wants the Crown Prince to have a child soon because she is afraid he will lose control and become a monster at any time. Sakura tries to persuade her that Amir is no longer the dangerous individual he once was, but she cannot guarantee that the past will not repeat itself. When Metis hears this, she gets up to check something. She wants to know if Serena ingested the same thing that killed the previous candidate for Princess Consort. Meanwhile, Serena has recovered from a night of resting in her husband's arms, and she is taken aback when she wakes up to find him in his birthday suit. This part ends here. Thank you for watching till the end it took a lot of time and energy to make these kinds of videos, so please subscribe to my channel to watch more interesting Manhua stories.